Hello makers, I'm Joe the 3D Maker Noob and today I have a special unboxing to do. This is the Anacubic Photon, obviously by Anacubic. Now for those of you who follow me on Twitter, you know that a few days ago I received two packages. One was the um, Pale Poly Moai, it's an SLA printer which I had purchased around, well actually on the 1st of January, it was my first purchase that day. And the second box was this. This contains the anacubic photon. Now, while the Pale Poly Moai is an SLA, um, which does stereolithography like the Form Labs Form 1, Form 2, that is, you have a vat with resin inside and a build platform that goes down, and then you have a laser at the bottom, which pretty much traces the layers of the model you want to print, and the build plate slowly moves up, burns another layer, and so on. The Anacubic Photon is actually a DLP, and that is digital light projection. So it pretty much is the same concept as SLA. However, instead of a laser at the bottom, you actually have a screen which emits light, which projects light onto each and every layer. And since they use the both, both the same resin, uh, SLA and the DLP, it's still cured by UV light. And that is what is emitted. As for quality, we'll see a bit of differences because obviously a DLP printer uh, depends on the resolution of the screen which emits light. However, we'll get to that later. For now, we're gonna open the box, see what's inside, set it up and throw in a print. User manual, some tools, a face mask, USB stick, which is interesting because this is an eight gigabyte USB memory stick, meaning that this takes USB and not SD card. Some gloves, which come in handy because I go through these quite a lot now with SLA printers and some tools. We have a bottle of resin, some more tools. We have a power cable, power brick, and the unit itself. Ooh, fancy. Build platform. Get this out without breaking anything. Take the plastic out from the inside. Coffee filters. These are actually filters for the resin. These actually would come in very handy. They do have a net to catch any gunk that's left in the vat. So first we have to install this handle over here. So it does say here that the LCD is 2K resolution. So it's quite decent. Next we need to make sure that the LCD is free of dust. So we do that by undoing these two side screws over here, which hold the vat in place. Gonna take this out. Now I can see that the screen is not exactly clean. I'm just gonna grab some IPA or a towel with IPA and I'm just gonna wipe the LCD very lightly. Next, we're gonna go to tools, move Z, and we're gonna move the build platform upwards. Gonna insert the build platform and lock it in place. Gonna let it move freely like that. Gonna grab half a piece of A4 paper and I'm just gonna throw it over the LCD screen. Then what I'm gonna do is home the Z axis. This is very much similar to how you would level an FDM printer. So basically what we want to do is the lower the build plate enough until there is friction between the paper and the build plate. So I'm gonna change it to 0.1 millimeter and I'm gonna move it down a bit more. It's starting to feel a little drag, just like that. So just enough for it to have a bit of drag on the paper. Once that's done, we're simply going to tighten this Allen key that's in here. Then we're gonna go back and we're gonna click on Z equals zero. Done, and that is zero leveled. And I just realized that in between the pages, you also have an additional film you can use for replacement. Next, we need to check the LCD. So first, we're gonna go to tools, move Z, and we're gonna raise the build platform up so we can see what's happening on the LCD. Gonna click on tools, detection, and we're gonna click on next. Next, we're gonna put in the vat. We're just gonna push it all the way in, tighten it down 
with the side screws all the way down, making sure that it's flush. Then we're gonna open the resin bottle and simply pour in until it's full one third of the way up. Then we're simply gonna go on print. We're gonna choose the model and we're gonna press play. This is the final result. This was a pre-sliced G-code that was already on the USB stick. Now this is a modified lattice cube, um, a torture test made by Maker's Muse. And it has some complexities and the logos inside. And I have to say that for a first try out of the box, this is quite awesome. Now granted, this is a DLP. It's not an SLA, so it, it doesn't involve lasers. As I said, it involves an LCD screen. And therefore you cannot expect to get the same precision that you would get out of an SLA printer like the Moai. However, I have to say that for about $440, this thing does a pretty decent job. Now the build volume on this is 115 on the X axis, 65 millimeters on the Y, and about 155 on the Z axis. So by any standards, it's actually not a bad print volume. And especially for the fact that it comes in such a small factor. So it fits nicely on a disc. Now, after this was finished, I did leave a print running overnight. And that was this character right here. Now. This particular one I printed on the Moai, and this is the same exact model with the same exact supports. All I did was literally just slice it on the uh, Anycubic software and print it at the same 50 micron layer height. What I wanted to see was how do they differ in between each other. Now what I did was, since the um, resin color was different, I decided to do a bit of a primer, a gray primer, because the details will pop out a bit more and that would give me a better idea of what they look like. Now looking at them side by side, they're almost identical. However, when you delve in deeper, you can see that all the details are not going to be as defined or as deep as they would be on an SLA printer. However, that doesn't mean that it doesn't do a decent job. From these two, I can see that an SLA printer does layers much more smoothly. However, on the DLP, if you look very, very closely, you can kind of see like, it's almost like a salmon skin effect on a microscopic level. However, as I said, they're very similar to each other, not exactly the same though. So it all depends on what you're after. At the end of the day, the Moai is a much more advanced SLA printer and it costs a lot more money. However, for a desktop DLP printer at what, $430? The Anycubic Photon actually does a pretty decent job. However, it all depends on what you're after. For 50 micron prints, the Anycubic Photon can do quite a decent job. Um, however, the Peo Poly Moai, definitely a cut above the rest. But then again, as I said, while they're both um, resin 3D printers, one is laser, it's SLA, and the other one is DLP, so it works a bit differently. Now, obviously, when it comes to resin-based 3D printers, there are other factors to consider. For example, one of the major ones is it's a messy, messy hobby. You have gloves, you have the resin, you have constant cleaning, you have post-processing. After you get the printout, you have to wash it in alcohol or ethanol and then rinse it with water and then you have to cure it in order to harden it even more 
then you have to clean the build plates in order to clean it you have to filter out the resin and it's it's a tedious tedious um hobby however if you're into stuff like this which is board games characters details jewelry stuff like that this is probably the only way to go because I don't foresee FDM printing ever reaching this kind of accuracy. I also want to point out that while the Anacubic Photon has a carbon filter with an extractor fan inside, it is not a good idea to print in a closed environment like such as this small room here. I had to leave the door and windows open um, while I was printing because the, the smell of the resin can get quite strong. So it's definitely something to keep in mind when printing with the Anacubic Photon. Other than that, I'm actually impressed. It's a solid, solid printer, aluminium frame and chassis, and it's got a solid door. It prints very well. The, the quality is, is really, really nice. Think of it this way, that one of the best prints you can print on an FDM printer is pretty much an meh, okay kind of quality on an SLA and a DLP. So once you have the settings of the resin dialed in, it can print absolutely beautifully. So yeah, if, if you're into this kind of stuff, resin-based printer is definitely something I would recommend. So that is it for me, guys. Um, I just wanted to do this, well, quick unboxing and initial thoughts of the Anacubic Photon, because I have to say that I was, I was really excited and really looking forward to use this printer. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest, it didn't disappoint. So yeah, I'm very happy with the result. I'm gonna leave links to uh, the Anacubic shop on uh, AliExpress in the video description below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I am quite sure that Anacubic will be reviewing them and answering any questions that you might have as they have done with the Anacubic Ultra Base video. So thank you very much for watching guys. Um, please like, share, subscribe, and as always, Happy making, guys.